The Crooked in Times Square by George Selga. Chapter Nine: The Chinese Dinner. Maria decided that there must be something wrong with Chester's diet if he was eating two-dollar bills. He had been feeding him all the things he liked himself, but now it occurred to him that what was good for a boy might not be right for a cricket. So he made up his mind to take the matter to an expert. Late one afternoon, when he got off duty and the newsstand, Maria cleaned up the cricket cage, gave Chester a dusting of it with a Kleenex, and took him to Chinatown to see Sir Fang. It was almost seven o'clock when he got there, and the shop was closed. He peered through the window and couldn't make. Out a crack of light under the door to the inner room, and he heard the choppy murmur of two voices talking together in Chinese. Maria rapped on the glass. The voices stopped talking. He rapped again, louder. The inside door opened, and Seifan came into the shop, squinting through the half light. When he saw Maria, he turned. Dropped and he said, "Ah, it's little cricket boy." He opened the door. "Hello, Mister Fong," said Maria. "I don't want to bother you, but I have a problem with the cricket." "You come in, please," said Sai Fong, closing the door behind him. "Very old friend, were here now. Everything about crickets." He led Maria into the next room, which was the kitchen. On a black cast iron stove, there were half a dozen pots steaming and sing, sing, singing. The table was laid with beautifully painted china plates. One of them were pictures of Chinese ladies and gentlemen dressed in colored brown gowns, gowns and robes. Walking on little bridges over a calm blue lake, beside the places that had been set were two pairs of chopsticks, each one in its own paper wrapper. A very old Chinese gentleman was sitting in a rocking chair next to the window. He had a thin gray beard that hung from down from his chin and was wearing a long red and gold robe that looked like the ones on the plates. When Mario came in, he stood up slowly, with his hands folded, and bowed. Mario had never had an old Chinese gentleman bow to him before, and he didn't quite know how to what to do. But he thought he had better bow back. Then the Chinese man bowed again, and so did Mario. They might have gone on bowing all night if Sei Fang hadn't said something in Chinese to his friend. It sounded like this: "Che shi ye ha shi so ti er tang," and it means, "This is the boy with the cricket." Maria and Chester stole a glance at each other, but neither one of them understood Chinese. The old man, however, became became very excited. He peered down through the bars of the cricket cage and exclaimed with delight. Then, throwing himself up. To his full height, he made a very low and solemn bow. Chester bowed back and gave one of his most polite chirps. That pleased the Chinese gentleman very much. He and Sei Fang began laughing and talking together. It sounded like the cheerful clicking of hundreds of chopsticks. When they were finished telling each other how fine a cricket Chester was, Sei Fang said to Mario. You like Chinese food, please? Yes, I do," answered Maria. I guess he had never had anything Chinese except chop suey, but he was awfully fond of that. You wait, please," said Sei Fang. He disappeared in the the shop and came back in a minute with two new robes. This is for you," he said, helping Maria on with one. It was purple and lavender and had designs of the sun. Moon and stars stitched all over it, and this might," said Sei Fang, putting on his own robe. 
which was blue and green covered with pictures of fish and wreaths and water lilies. The old Chinese gentleman whispered something to say for and say whispered back whispered an answer back in Chinese. So slowly, he said to Larry, no rope small enough for cricket. Oh, that's all right, said Maria. You said please, said Safe, and brought another chair to the table. Maria sat down, and the Chinese gentleman sat upside him. Safe Fong put the cricket cage in the middle of the table, and then went back and forth to the shop, bringing over steaming bowls of Chinese food. Chester was very curious to see what it tastes like, since he had never even had chop suey. This is Chou Yak, Chinese vegetable, said Sai Fang, setting down the first bowl. There were all kinds of green vegetables in the Chou Yak, string, beans, and pea pots, and also pieces of diced chicken. Next came the fried rice with pork, cooked a delicious brown with a nutty, meaty flavor. Then Chou Mein with pan fried noodles and cash, cash, uh, cashew nuts. But it wasn't all soupy like the chill main Mario had seen at the ultimate. He could have made a meal just out of the pan fried noodles alone. And, the, and last there was duck cooked with pineapples. The pieces of roast duck were sm swimming in a Lucius sweet sauce. Finally, Si Fong brought over a big pot of something. You know what this is? He asked and lifted the lid. Maria looked at tea, he said. E he he he, laughed Si Fong. You make really, you make very good China map, he said, and smiled broadly at Mario. Mario had a hard time learning to use the chopsticks. They kept slipping out of his head. May believe two very long fingers, said Seifong. Two long fingers, two long fingers, Maria told himself over and over again. And then he could work them. He got so that he could almost feel the food on the end of them as he lifted it into his mouth. Chester was served his dinner too. Seifong got a tiny store out of the cardboard and put a dab, dab of each course on it for the cricket. And he had never tasted anything so good. He especially liked the chow yak because vegetables were his favorite. Every so often he would have to stop eating and chirp for joy. Whenever he did, the Chinese gentleman and Sei Fang smiled and chattered to each other in Chinese. Mario felt the same way Chester did, but he couldn't chirp. All he could do to show how much he was enjoying everything was to answer yes please each time Sei Fang asked him if he wants more. When the four of them had eaten as much as of the chow yak and chow mein and pork fried rice and duck with pineapples as they wanted. Sei Fong brought out some candied kumquats for dessert. Maria had two and several more cups of tea. Chester was so full he could only nibble on a piece of one. Now, said Sei Fong, when they were all finished, what is problem with clicket? He lit his white clay pipe, and the old Chinese gentleman lit one too. They sat smoking with the wipes of smoke curling up around their chins, looking very wise, Maria said. The problem is, Maria began, but that, like cricket, it's money. And he told them all about the two dollar bill. Si Fang had translated everything into Chinese for his friend. After each new sentence, the old man would nod his head and say, ah, or oh, or mmm, in a serious voice. So I see he must not be getting the right things to eat. Mary clutched his story. Very excellent deduction, said Sei Fong. He begins talking rapidly in Chinese. Then he stood up 
and so you wait, please, and went into the shop. In a moment, he was back, carrying a big book under his arm. As the two Chinese were reading it, they would stop now and then and mutter something to each other. Maria went around behind them. Of course, he could not read the Chinese characters, but there were pictures in the book too. One showed a picture. One shows a princess sitting on a ivory throne. On a stand beside her was a cricket cage, just like Chester's. All of a sudden, the Chinese gentleman began to squeak with excitement. Yule, 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 he said, tapping the page with the stem, stem of his pipe. Here is, here is, Sifong exclaimed to Mario. This story of princess of ancient China, China had clicked for pet and fed him mouth belly lips. It said, just as silk worm who ate a mulberry tree spin beautiful silk, so Clicka who ate lips spin beautiful song. Then we've got to find a mulberry tree, said Mario. The only one he knew of right of hand was in the botanical gardens in Brooklyn, and that had a fence around it. But I have three, said C. Fong, and his face curled up in a smile as wide as a holiday pumpkin's. Light outside window. He went to the window and pulled up the shade. It the courtyard outside a marble tree was growing. One of its branches almost stuck into the kitchen. She pulled off about a dozen leaves and put one in the cricket cage, but Chester didn't touch it. Barry was this made. He doesn't like it, he said. Oh, he lied, said Safer. He just full of Chinese dinner up. <laughs> and that was exactly the truth. Any other time, Chester would have been gobbling up the leaf, but he was stuffed now, just to show them that leaves were what he wanted. However, he managed to take one bite. You see, said Safer, he ate leaf when he hungry. Chester was feeling so contented that he had to sing for a while. Everyone listened very quietly. The only other sound was the creaking of the rocking chair, which went very well with the cricket song. Si Fong and his friend were very touched by the concert. They sat with their eyes closed and expressions of complete peace on their faces. When it was over, the old Chinese gentleman blew his nose on a silk handkerchief he took out of his sleeve. His eyes were moist. That being at them with the hand curve, he whispered something to Siphon. He said it like being in Palace Garden to hear Clicka sing. Siphon translated to Mario. The boy sang Siphon for the Chinese dinner, but said he would have to be going now because it was late. You come back any time, said Siphon. He put the eleven mulberry leaves in a little box and gave it to Maria. Plenty leaves on clay. I say, all for cricket. Maria thanks him again. The old Chinese gentleman stood up and bowed. Maria bowed to him. Sifang bowed and Maria bowed to him too. In the cage, Chester was bowing to everybody. Maria back towards the door, still bowing, and went out. It had been a very nice evening. He felt formal and polite from all the bowing, and he was glad that this cricket had been able to make the two Chinese gentlemen so happy. The end of the chapter 9